Hello, I'm Lawrence Chard. Today we're going to have a look at an 1887 gold £5 coin of Queen Victoria Jubilee issue. On my first look at this coin, the impression was that it's a very high quality coin, probably genuine, but there's a, a slight chance that it could have been a very high quality fake. And this particular coin issue is one of the most commonly faked coins in the whole British coin series which is why we're extra careful when we come across them. The next stage in this case was to put the coin on our night on tester and that's an, an X-ray diffraction machine which gives us a, a very quick and accurate metal analysis. Looking at the gold content of this coin it was coming out at about 925 parts per thousand against an expected 916 or 917. That may not sound like a vast difference, but it is significant and it's enough to raise suspicions. Following on from this, I did an eyeglass examination in quite, quite high detail, but that's uh, quite hard work and a bit tiring. So we also take high quality macro photos of most of the fakes we come across and I can then study them at leisure at very high zoom levels. From what I was seeing from the, the zoomed macros, I went and had a look at our bulletin, bulletin in counterfeits, which is um, a publication that we got on subscription way back in the 1970s. It's not generally available. Uh, we've actually scanned uh, quite significant parts of it for our own use. The interesting and exciting thing there was we actually found a match for this coin. And as a result of all this, we're now going to take a closer, more detailed examination of this coin. To my mind, the worst area on this coin is round about the date. And in the area called the exerg, that's the uh, bit that the date's in below the main design. And instantly I can see what looks like a small scratch running through the top of the first eight. And... It looks to me as if that's not a scratch that's got on the coin. Afterwards, it looks like it was there when it was stuck, which would obviously not occur on a genuine coin. While we're concentrating on the date, you can also see that the first eight, and uh, to a certain extent the second eight, has got a, a little bit of a, an indent at the top and the bottom there. And the second eight has also got a little bit of an indent there, not so much at the bottom, which just don't look quite right to me. They look like an irregularity or an imperfection. Right above the date, we've got what looks like a strange flaw on the ground running up there, and a little branch of it running this way in a kind of V shape. I don't like that at all. Still in this exerg area, the whole field or the flat background part of the coin looks a bit off, it's a bit irregular, there's quite a few scuffs and can I say dirty looking areas in it that just don't look as clean as I think they should do. I wouldn't expect to see this on a genuine coin and this irregularity isn't consistent on the rest of the coin. I don't know why, but to my mind, this makes the coin suspicious. So, here's the genuine coin. And the first thing is, there's no scratch on the top of the first eight, which I wouldn't expect to, to find. And the little indents at the top and bottom of the eights on the other coin aren't present on this. Also, if we have a look, and we'll try to do a side-by-side -side comparison later, is the two eights are slightly different shapes. What we're going to look at now is a very small mark or defect on this coin, and it's round about there, just above the horse's head. This is a particular defect that's mentioned in the bulletin on counterfeits, and if you didn't know what you're looking for, or if you just saw that normally, you'd assume it was just another little scuff, mark or scratch on the coin. But once you know that it's a marker for this particular type of counterfeit, then it should start to ring an alarm bell. 
one other point to look for on this coin, or one that I noticed, it's not on the bulletin, is there's a defect above the garter on George's leg, round about there. But to my mind, that shouldn't be there, and it doesn't look like damage that's occurred to the coin after it was stuck. Now we're back to a genuine coin, and we're looking for defects in this little area here, and the defect that we found on the fake is not present on this coin. And still looking at the genuine coin, we're looking to see if there's anything going above George's garter, and there's no defect visible on this coin like we saw on the fake. Now we're having a look at the two coins side by side, and in particular the date and exerg area. And even though one's upside down compared with the other, if you have a look at the, the flat part of the field there, you can see that the, the fake, which is the one at the top, looks a little bit rougher and less clean. While we're at it, you may also be able to tell that the, the fake, the top coin, looks slightly more yellow than the other coin, which has got more of a reddish tone. I didn't notice this on the fake until we actually started doing this side-by-side -side comparison. The other particular defect that's mentioned in the bulletin is also very small, and it's a very small defect on the field just to the left of the Queen's neck level with the necklet, and I'm pointing about to it now. Very small, again it's not easy to see. If you weren't looking specifically for it, you could just assume it was a small scuff defect, a little bit of wear on the coin. Once you know that it's a marker for a particular type of fake, again it rings another alarm bell. The third defect mentioned in the bulletin are a couple of striation lines on the, on the crown or within the crown in this little section here and they run in that direction. I've looked long and hard at this and I've looked also at our macro photos of it and I can't actually see those striations. But two out of three defects is still enough to ring bells. Now we're looking at the genuine coin again and we're looking for the space in the crown and uh, this one shouldn't have any striations and of course it doesn't so there's no surprise there. But I'm just showing you this for comparison. There are a lot of defects and marks that aren't mentioned in the bulletin that I've seen on this coin and two obvious ones that I've owned in on are there are two what look like dig marks on Victoria's cheek about there. Not absolutely possible to tell that these were done before the coin was stuck or whether it was done afterwards, but to me it looks like they were there when it was stuck, and that's obviously not a good sign. The other type of defect that we often see on fake coins are raised pimples, which are almost always a bad sign, and they aren't mentioned in the bulletin on counterfeits for this coin but I've seen on the fake, around this area here of the Queen's Neck, there are, well, there's a cluster of about five or six small pimples, and the odd one or two elsewhere, there's also one or two on the cheek, and raised pimples like that are a bad sign. To my mind, that says fake. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe, and you're also welcome to leave comments for us in the comments place below.